Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Luke here from Astro Awakening. This is my full moon in Taurus lunar eclipse special for you guys. I'm going to break down the astrology, the energy, and just a whole lot of other shit <laughs> for this uh, video. I'll try to keep it under the hour. Um, the last um, new moon video I did a couple of weeks ago went to 59 minutes. That's my longest yet, but it was also my most popular with my most views. So thank you to everyone that watched and a special thank you for those that hit the little thumb button. Um, you know, so it helps to sort of satisfy my ego. I'm such an influencer. <laughs> ah, okay, so much is happening. So much change. The alchemy of change, right? With Scorpio season, it's the it's the it's the sign of death and rebirth. What is being birthed? Well, there is a new humanity that's being birthed, or one that should we say um, they're trying to birth, perhaps. So it's up to us on an individual level which timeline we're going to go down as to which humanity we want to go and be on. Do we want to be on the artificial line? Do we want to be on more totalitarianism, more control, more restrictions, hooked up, juiced up, continue to just be like grass-fed, or well, not even grass-fed, <laughs> to a system of AI control and techno technocratic bloody oligarchy of like sort of big tech controlling our every move, watching every little thing? Do we want freedom? Do we want the complete officer? Do we want to return to our, our roots, our indigenous sort of culture and roots? Is there a blend of these two? I don't know the answer, but these are the questions on a deeper level that this period of time, and especially this next six month period of time, I think are going to be um, needed to answer. You know, just as a side note, we're moving out of 2021 and into 2022. 2022, Six 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 six. I went, did I say that? <laughs> build back better. Build back better. Build back better. Build back better. Build back better from what? What are we building back better from? Is it from twenty twenty and all of what's been going on? I don't want to use the word because I I, I get demoted. Um, are we building back from that, or are we building back from something different altogether? Do you know that the letter B also um, resonates at the frequency of the number two? Ooh. Build back better. 222, 2022. What the fuck's going on in 2022? Well, to answer that question, what the fuck has been going on in 2020 and 2021? We are moving rapidly towards a new birth. We're in Scorpio season now. We're going to move into at the end of this year with the South Node in Scorpio, the North Node in Taurus for the next 18 month period. There is something being birthed, that's for sure. Um, more on that on another video a little later. Let's dive into this full moon for you guys. So it's on an eclipse. An eclipse is gives a special potency and power to the lunation. A lunation is either a new moon, a full moon, a, you know, a quarter moon. It's just a part of a lunation, right? Uh, or, or the lunar cycle. So we have a new moon. And, and if we have that new moon close to the uh, a conjunction with one of the nodes, we have an eclipse. If we have a full moon close to the conjunction of one of the nodes, the, the moon's nodes, we have a, a lunar eclipse. So this one is a lunar eclipse and it's on the north node. So the north node is like this process of release, this cathartic release that we can do helps align us to like the future, to the destiny, to the destiny, to where we're going, to the direction and letting go of what was. Um, it's Taurus, right? So it's about what we have to have and to possess that keep us comfort and secure. And maybe if we look back over the last six months, in particular, what happened in the last six months? Well, in the outer world, the intensity that they went to to drive this agenda went like this. <laughs> With the threat of loss of income, loss of job, disconnected from society, not allowed to go anywhere, go certain places. Now, this ever-looming deadline that's coming that's going to be like, you're going to be locked out if, you, if you're an extremist. I'm an extremist. Um, but this six-month period has really been about that. And what have we done? Well, what do we need to have to feel comfort and secure? Well, those things, if we, if we haven't got, if we haven't found within ourselves, if we have not yet found deep within ourselves this place of comfort and security, a reconnection to our heart center, chances are our comfort and security come from outside of self. 
whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's money, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, whether it's family, whether it's whatever it is, a location, whether it's something, maybe it's material possession, maybe it's the latest phone or watch, maybe it's something, but whatever it is, it's outside of you and you need to have it to possess it, to feel what? Safe and secure. Well, what are you willing to compromise to have that? comfort and security and do you see that if you place that level of comfort and security outside of you that you are going to be dependent on those things for that comfort and security and what about this what about those that control those things that you need to have or the way that you can get those things that you need to have through the monetary system hello we're looking at the bull here we're looking at the stock you know, if you have cattle, you got stock. I got stock. You got stock in the stock market too. We're talking about money, right? And the control of it. So if you have this deep need for comfort and security that's placed into possessions outside of you, and those people that can control the very means in which you acquire those things can control you because now you are dependent on their system to gain those things. And Scorpio... Scorpio is about death and rebirth. Death and rebirth. What needs to die and be reborn? Well, where do you place your value? What have you placed your value in? Are you looking short-term at just getting back to the way things are? Please stop this. Make it go away. And not looking long-term at where the fuck humanity is heading if we continue to obey to sacrifice, to hand over our authority, our sovereignty, our control, our children? Have you stopped to consider for one second what's ahead? These are things to, to ponder. And as, as this full moon hits tonight, now I'm in Mel, uh, sorry, I was in Melbourne. I'm on the Gold Coast, so Australian Eastern Standard Time, not daylight time, 6.57 p.m., 19th of November. I'm filming this in the morning of that, so it's tonight. If you're watching this at a later date, it's the 19th of November, 6.57 p.m., Australian Eastern Standard Time. That is the point of this full moon. It's an eclipse. There's potency to it. The other thing about eclipse is an eclipse brings a wild card into the mix, a wild card of chaos. A little bit of, you're not sure what's going to happen. If we clip, clap, clip, clap, 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 if we clip, clip, clock, if we move the fucking clock backwards <laughs> two weeks ago. And if you had looked at my previous video, that one hour long epic on the new moon, you would have remembered that this new moon was exactly opposite Uranus, the revealer, the rebeller, the revolutionist freedom fighter right so we have a lot of shift coming on this full moon it's really a real massive release on a personal level this is just an inner shift of your consciousness and a realization of what the fuck have i been doing what the fuck are we doing here what, why, 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 why do I need that? Why do I have to have that? Why is that the thing that's going to fulfill me? There's always the opportunity when you have these realizations to step onto the path of inner self-work, self-realization and do the work, heal the wounds. That's where astrology is a wonderful thing. And that's the work that I do is I help people move through when they are awakening and they're having these new levels of awareness in their consciousness and they're going through the astro awakening, my role is to reconnect them to themselves and help them navigate that sometimes treacherous path, but often always leading to a better way of being, a better life, a better reality, more fulfillment, less need for the material things, a reconnection to the source energy, the heart energy. There's the sun in Scorpio and the, the moon in Taurus. And we have up here, we have Jupiter in Aquarius, fixed T-square. 
Right? So you've got this sort of death and rebirth energy running up to this, you know, detached sort of energy. Jupiter in Aquarius, this, this revelation might have a lot to do with truth. You know, Jupiter bringing the truth to light. And Jupiter in Aquarius, don't give a fuck about your feelings. Detach that and just bring the awareness through, the light through. And Taurus over here, ruling those material things we have to have and fix onto in our habits. And the missing piece to that sort of T-square is the Leo section, and Leo is the heart. And this is an opportunity to reconnect to the heart. The heart is the missing piece, but you're the missing piece. You are the great awakening. And it happens in here, not out there. The great awakening is an internal state that you awaken to, not an external reality. The external reality will be created when we all look within. And I am very optimistic that that's the process that's underway. And that's the very thing that they're trying to stop or delay or hijack with this bullshit. The awakening really, really, really tri was triggered by 9-11. And it's been speeding up ever since and grabbing more people like this surge of a wave, a tsunami that's moving through reality. It surged and engulfed me in 2014, 2015, and the way I went on my awakening journey. And what I've seen since 2020 is just more and more people and a wider range of people and older and younger and all sorts of demographics waking up. And they're now waking up. Where are they waking up now? Where are they waking up now? They're waking up within the beast. The beast is this matrix system, right? And they're waking up within the belly of the beast. They're waking up within the government, within the medical system, within the health system, within the financial system, within the police, the armed services. They're waking up with from within these systems like we are waking up from within our own heart space. That's what's going to drive this shift and this change. That is the illumination, the revelation. That is what this lunar eclipse is about. It's about a shift on a deep level and a shift of your motivations, your will, your desire. It's, it's confronting these dysfunctional habits that keep you stuck or detached or dependent on this fake, phony, fiat, fucked up fucking world full of shit that we don't need. It's time we get back to the basics. And when we come out, of the outer world and down into our inner world it's simple love is the answer love who you are love what you do love when you wake up in the morning and when you go to sleep at night if you can't be with the one you love love the one you're with honey love the one you're with do, 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 do. guess what that's you you gotta love you number one love you not as you are when you have the bling and the Gucci, not then, now. Not when you have that job, that promotion, that house, that baby, that boyfriend. Now, self-acceptance. You aren't perfect, neither am I, but we are imperfectly perfect as you are. Kurt Cobain said it, come as you are. As you are. That is what transitions us collectively. That's what tr transmutes this energy into the collective conscious and unconscious is the personal reconnection, the personal inner awakening, the reconnection to what? The heart, the center. You know the heart, right? It provides the life for every organ every part of the body it's just the it's the rhythm of life that's the heart what they've done what they've done to prevent the awakening from the heart center which is the place of love interesting that heart and earth are the same word right we're fortunate here because we have Uluru, right? which is the heart chakra of the entire world. So we Australians are really uniquely connected to that. And that's why we are copying it the most. 
Because once we collectively wake up internally and waken our heart, our pride, our lion from our Leo from within, and we reconnect to one another through that space, not through socially distanced or inoculated up now that we can, oh, now I'm free because I followed their rules and I did that and I disconnected from what? From here. That's not the pathway. That's their pathway. That's an artificial pathway. That's not the natural pathway. Natural is always in here. Always within. I'm going to do something really interesting. I'm going to jump up and show you the Sabian symbols for the full moon and the sun's position. If you're not familiar on what the Sabian symbols are, um, they are an understanding that every degree, every unique degree of the, the zodiac, 360 degrees, every unique degree has a specific meaning or has a symbol associated with it. Aptly known the Sabian symbols. Um, and what you can do is a few things. On a personal level, you can look up your Sabian symbols for the placements within your birth chart. My son is at the first degree of Virgo, so I would look up the first degree of Virgo. However, because we start at the zero degree of Virgo, I want to actually looking up the second degree. So the site that I use that, um, that I've shared on the screen now, hopefully you can see that, is um, James Burgess, I believe it is. And um, if you just type in Sabian symbols and go to James Burgess, um, I like his site because it's very simple. We can go up here. He's got a list of the Sabian symbols. So you'll notice here, I've clicked the 28th, um, Scorpio 28, which is actually any placement between the 27th and 28th degree. This uh, full moon is happening with the sun at 27 and a bit, 14 degrees, 27 degrees, 14 minutes of Scorpio with Taurus moon, full moon at 27 and 14 minutes, 27 degrees, 14 minutes of Taurus. I'll get it out one second. I can never do a drink of water. Okay, so um, let's actually look at the full moon first. I've, been, I've showed you that there. A woman pursued by mature romance. Perpetual new beginnings. Limits of the physical body need not stop us from staying alive to new possibilities and opportunities. Limits of the physical body. It matters not your age. It matters not your skin color, your decree, your anything. Limits of the body need not stop us staying alive to new possibilities and opportunities. New. Why do we, how do we find the new when we let go of the old? The sense of time-based linear degrading of capacity is refuted. In other words, in other words, as we get older along this, I'm now 43, then I'm going to be 44 in a minute, I'm going to be 50. Oh my God, this linear, um, time-based linear passage of time degrading our capacity. This symbol says, no, we do not need to grow old and die off, but instead always have the capacity to find a new beginning. For example, we can fall in love even when this is driven mostly by heart's joy in sharing rather than sexuality and procreation. Exactly the dynamics we have here. You've got the Scorpio side of it, which is the sexual desire side, really tied into what the desires of what will on, on, a, on an unhealed level, the desires of the ego, right? But it's the heart's joy in sharing rather than the sexual um, need for procreation, okay? It's just that we can find, um, we can fall in love. We can fall in love with ourselves. We can fall in love with those around us and the lifestyle that we have. We can fall in love again without the need for desire, Desire is something, I want something because I don't have it. I desire it. If I had it, I don't desire it. I no longer desire it. I've got it. Here's an example. I, I want the latest phone. Well, now I've got it. I don't want it anymore. I don't desire it. I'm not going to get the latest phone and then go, geez, I want another one. That one felt so good. I better get it. No, because I have it now. I no longer desire it. But the heart doesn't need desire. The heart can just... It provides the life for the entire body. Your body is like this earth. The earth is an anagram for heart. It's at the center. Find your center. 
okay? And it's never too late to start again a new beginning. It's never too late. You can find love at any age. The linear time-based, I'm 20, I'm 40, I'm 50, doesn't mean squat. Very interesting when you look at these symbolic breakdowns and you look at what's happening in this world and you can relay that. And if you're starting to tap into this sort of feminine right brain symbolized way of interpreting reality, this stuff is going to connect. And I don't need to guess, I know. Let's look at the Scorpio degree of the sun. Kings of, king of the fairies approaching his domain. The universal, uh, blah, blah, blah. However, however pompous and controlling society may get, we still have our own inner world over which we hold sway. Awareness of our deepest yearnings. I guarantee you, right, with this Taurus energy of like needing to possess and have something, I guarantee that once you get it, you're still going to have this void, right? Oh, you're going to work so hard. You're going to put all your energy in, whether it's a, you know, a job, a new car, a house, a boyfriend, whatever it is, you're going to put all this energy into it and you're going to get it. <sighs> and there's still going to be this void because it can't be filled from the outside of you. It can only be filled with from within when you reconnect to the, the you within, when you awaken to you within. There. Now, we may be keenly aware of the power of nature and also of the need for ego-driven behaviours to defend against risk. And we may well live our lives out subservient to the passions and restrictions that arise from those two forces. Yet in truth, we are sovereign and free. Would we only learn to act like a king whose domain is subtle and lovely if we approach life with a such regal confidence, then we find our expectations of self-fulfillment are met. I'm going to leave that on the screen for a little bit longer so you can read it and reread it and screenshot it. I don't really need to say any more about this eclipse energy. If you would just read those two symbols for the sun and the moon, and find the balance. And where is it going to be? You need to find the center always. Polarity is like, you know, day and night, good and bad, hot and cold, red and blue, dark and light. And when you gravitate towards polarity, you will always be opposed by the opposite force because nature desires balance, harmony. And it will find that harmony in the balancing and rebalancing, especially when we're off our center. We have to come to the center. They'll tell you there's two ways, but I know there's three. And the third way, is the middle way, always the middle way. This finger is Saturn, the boss, the authority. This is what you need to become. Tall, upright, straight, and your own authority, your own power, your own rule maker. Guided and driven by what? Your heart your center. Let's take a quick, quick dive into the chart just for those keen astrologers at home. Um, and we'll finish off there. I don't know how long this has gone for now. Maybe 40 minutes. Whoops. <laughs> I got a lot to say sometimes. Um, so here, here it is. There's the sun at 27 degrees, the moon at 27 degrees. You know, Uranus is still opposing Mars or Mars opposing Uranus, right? Um, hold your ground, stand your ground. Perhaps what it is with this Mars energy is the realization that you have the power to change the way you go about life, the way you go about you, how you do things, and what drives you to do those things. 
And what drives you to acquire certain things and need certain things and have to have certain things? And when you get the awareness and the, and the light bulb that will come with this lunation, this revelation, this, this flip of a switch, this shift, right? Then what needs to happen is an activation of your willpower, right? You don't want to be stuck in two worlds. And two worlds analogy is this. You have the insight, the revelation, the light bulb goes off and you know what you need to do. You know, you know you've, got the, you've got the awareness. That's what needs to change. But you don't make the change. So you're stuck in two realities. You're physically in the world, but you know you need to move and change from. But you're mentally in the world where you've made that transition and you get torn. You really have to empower yourself and use your willpower. And isn't it funny that Leo, the heart, right, is also the sign of the will. The will. Love is the will. Love of what? Love of self and love of others. It can drive you to make these changes. We're on the brink as a collective of something incredible. We don't realize on a collective level how powerful we are because we have been indoctrinated. We have been programmed. We have been deprogrammed by a dysfunctional educational system, financial system, medical system, government political system. systematically deprogrammed us. We've come into this world completely lost. And they've played this role of, come here, child. Come here. Here, want some lollies? Come here, child. And we've gone, oh, yeah, that looks nice. Yum. Yum. Let's eat that. That's good. And look where it's led us. The awakening that we are going through is the realization of this. We see now how they've done this, this agenda that's been pulled or tried to be pulled over humanity in the last has meant that they've had to expose themselves to the light, these faceless people have come out and these systems and the corruption and the dysfunction within them has been shown now to the light, but it's up to us to complete this cycle of change and transformation. Reconnecting here. Now, this weekend, Saturday, I think there's some protests, but next weekend on the 27th on Saturday, all around Australia, millions march. I'm going to be there. I think my parents are going. Pretty much everyone I know is going. I've been fortunate enough to attend quite a few, a couple of rallies in Melbourne, um, you know, one at the border in Queensland here recently. And every time I have, they've gotten bigger and better. And that is the great awakening. So if you're on the fence, if you drunk the Kool-Aid and you're a little feeling ill and you don't know what to do, come and join us. Come and join this rising up. Come and join reclaiming our sovereignty reclaiming this earth from this pathetic, wounded, evil, patriarchal system. Patriarchy isn't evil and matriarchy isn't evil, but our system of governance and control is a dysfunctional, evil, patriarchal system. Now it's up for the, the divine masculine to rise and to bring balance back to that and the divine feminine also to rise and create the support, the container for this to take place. I am supremely confident that we are going to move through this transformation and transition as a collective and come out the better side and be able to manifest heaven on fucking earth. Hallelujah. With that, though, we are going through some birthing pains. 
we're going through a potential chaotic period of time. We're on an eclipse, a lunar eclipse now. Next uh, two weeks, there's a solar eclipse, right? We're, we're in this Uranus energy that's been really um, volatile, sudden, unpredictable. How do we handle these chaotic times? We become open and flexible. When grounded in our heart space, it is much easier to navigate changing times because we have a light from within that can guide us. If you want to reconnect to your light within, if you are having trouble uh, you know, navigating these times, personal times, there's a lot of relationship stuff that's coming up that people are going through these big relationship busts up, breaks up, stuff coming to the surface, the need or the, uh, the inner knowing of like, oh, I don't think this is the right one for me. I get it. I've been there. I, I help people through these things regularly. If you need help navigating these times, if you've got the knowing, you're not sure how to implement it, reconnect to yourself using your chart, your astrology, and that's what I do. I'll put my details below. Thank you for watching for this long. Thank you for your continued support. My channel is growing. The views are growing. Um, each um, video I put up gets more and more views. So I'm super stoked about that because I have a fucking message to get out. I've been screaming like this for, you know, a few years now. And it's time that, you know, we, we get the message out. Like we have the power. We've always had the power. It's time to reclaim it. See y'all next time.